Hey, what's up, everyone? Andrew from American Musical Supply here, and I'm joined today by Chris Trainer, guitarist and session uh, session guitarist, producer, guitarist for Helmet and Bush. How you doing, Chris? Good, man. How you doing? Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, so today we're going to just talk. Uh, well, we got a couple of things we're going to talk about. But first off, uh, why don't you tell our, our viewers out there, like how how did you start? Uh, in music, your career, or how'd you start playing guitar? What attracted you to uh, living the life of music? I had a, um, a great grandfather's guitar under the steps, you know, in the basement of my house. It was a pre Gibson Epiphone. And um, I saw a band come to my school and play Almond Brothers. And I was like, I got to do that. And I started playing in bands because uh, some of my friends were into the in punk rock and hardcore scene in New York. And they took me to a show and I was like into the Grateful Dead and the Allman Brothers. But I saw those dudes on stage and I was like, I can do this. I can play as good as these guys. So it inspired me to actually be able to, you know, some musicians, when you see them, you're like, I could never do that. And then some people you see and you go like, I could do that. And so that inspired me to start playing live and stuff. That's cool. So in, in terms of that experience, like uh, with those those groups, I guess that more like kind of earlier jam, jam band kind of scene, like aside from that being like an influence on you to actually pick up the instrument, was that musically an influence as well? Or like a big part of, have you drawn a lot of inspiration from that for what you do now or? Well, I, I think I drew, you know, when you're, when you start playing an instrument, some of those things become ingrained. So one of the people that um, I work on records with Kyle Hoffman is a good friend of mine. He's like, you know, I'll be playing, you know, and we have to improvise a solo on something. And he's like, don't don't do that Allman Brothers stuff. <laughs> so it's just like some of the Dickie Betts things are just kind of like, you know, and so you don't hear them on like Bush records or the stuff that I played in and helmet. But like if I'm sitting down on my couch, that's like kind of my go to world. Right. Got you. Awesome. So um, what about from there um, when, you know, I understand you're from New York and, and now you're living out in L.A. So how did uh, how did those bands like Bush and Helmet come about? Um, Helmet, I was in New York. I was in a band called Orange Nine Millimeter. We opened for um, Quicksand and Helmet. So when they needed a guitar player, it just seemed like a logical step. They knew me and um when I tried out for the band, actually, Paige Hamilton, who was the lead guitar player and singer, didn't even show up. He's like, I like you. I know you can play. The guys like you. You're in the band. And then um, same thing, interestingly, with, with Bush, who I was hooked up with through producer Dave Sardi, who works with like Rick Rubin a lot. And he's he's a great producer on, in his own right. And he um, sent I got he connected me with Bush. I went out to England. Gavin didn't show up for the first week and <laughs> I played with the fans. I was like in a room with a bunch of strangers for a week, but that was that was a good experience. And I've been playing with um, Gav for 20 years now. Right on. That's yeah. cool. And uh, what about during the I guess the the this unusual time we find ourselves in this uh, pandemic season? What have you been uh, what have you been working on musically? Well, um, I was lucky that the the actual day that they did lockdown in Los Angeles, I. I finished my little uh, project studio and uh, Universal Audio was kind enough to hook me up with an Apollo twin. And uh, my my friends over at Slate um, helped me get this Raven desk. And I just been up here writing songs and playing on people's uh, records. I actually produced an entire song from, from this tiny room, which sounds great. And I'm not going to say which one. So people go, the drum sounds small, but so so you'll have to guess which one was done in here but there you know it, it's been great and it's been an amazing experience for me um to write with people to do interviews like this and everybody's just doing their part and like to move along and that's kind of really inspiring to me that like people are just keep making music we're interacting and uh we're promoting our music and and making products so it's it's really cool right on so is the the production kind of thing is that something that uh you've kind of recently gotten into like maybe because of the the situation that the way things are right now or is that something that you've always had a hand in as you've been making records it's something i've always wanted to do but um wasn't qualified to do and, and to be honest I'm, I'm really not qualified to do it now um i have a good friend kyle hoffman who who we work together we co-produce on a lot of stuff and he's an amazing engineer 
And I worked with him on Bush Records and, and a couple of different records that I was brought in. And uh, three years ago, we got hired to produce a record together. And I was like, oh, we can do this. I know, you know, like I know how it works and he knows the technical stuff. If, you know, if I don't know certain things about it and um, we've been making music. So it's something that I've always wanted to do. I get a real joy out of um, being in the studio and having something go from like nothing to something that's tangible to people. I love that process. Uh, for up, if it were up to me, I'd always be engaged in that process. It, you know, just, just, just makes me feel good. I think that's the reason why people play music actually. Like when you first play music, you, you play guitar or whatever and, and you get lost, right? There's this like passage of time that we're unaware of. And uh, that happens to me live, but for sure in the studio, that whole journey is it for me that's the meaning of life that's cool wow so um who are, have some of your i guess uh, producer like mentors or or people i mean maybe mentors is not a great word but like other people that you've looked to for inspiration and their production styles are there people that have been an influence on you in that coming from that arena I've been lucky to be around a lot of great producers so for instance Jay Baumgartner and I are are our friends we talk on the phone all the time um, and I'm always like, what do you do? You know, what do you put on your mix bus here? Like, what, you know, how do you approach this? And Bob Rock is a really good friend of mine. We talk all the time. And um, so he'll tell me stuff. He's like, this is what I do. Or, or I'd be like, how did you do that? I don't want to like ring his ear about it. You know, I don't want to be a pest about it. But it's pretty interesting process to be around these people um, that have been doing it for so long. And they're like they're just super talented at it. Do you know, I've been in the studio with a lot of people and um, some people are just, are, are in that like top percentile that they just have a knack for it. It's their whole vibe. So I'm lucky to be around those people. I'm a slow learner. Um, and so over the years, I worked with Dave Jordan when I was a kid, I've worked with a bunch of big producers. So you pick up things. And while everybody was out doing other things, I was in the studio. Like people had to kick me out of the studio because I would be like, what are you doing here? Like, how are you, you know, like, how are you doing those drum tracks? Like I was a guitar player, but I was interested in the whole process. Um, and so I guess just interest, you know, and enthusiasm, that's the, that would, that's it. That's the route. That's awesome. Very cool. So how, um, do you find that your guitar playing influences your production style? Like, is it, is it something that it's like, because that's something that's maybe natural or comfortable to you in terms of the instrument that you, that you chosen, like, does that, uh, or are you are you kind of like, no, I'm cool. Like I could do something without without having to really rely on guitar so much. Yeah, the guitar is like a vehicle, right? It's an instrument. I love it. I mean, I love it. I have one in my hands most of the day and I feel fortunate for that. But it's just an instrument. I'd be just as happy like having a song with like, you know, keyboards, um, you know, if the, the idea is right. And sometimes when I'm in the studio too, an idea that I have that I just would show somebody on the guitar, um, I kind of, I don't care. It's more about the melody. And then sometimes you have to have the guitar for like heavy music. And um, that's what I think. Like, you know, so that's where I grew up on, like through helmet, like he heavy kind of riff guitar. But not everybody wants that. I produced a record with somebody who wanted no guitars at all. And I was cool with that, you know? Eventually guitars ended up on the record because I'm a guitar player, but you know, I'm cool with people wanting that. That's awesome. So yeah. from your uh, guitar, you know, your guitar playing point of view, like, um, can you tell us a little bit about, about your rig and like what you, uh, not just for recording, but even things that if you want to share a little bit about what you use for playing live and. Um, I, I've been using Fractal Audio since it like came about. So, I'm, I'm one of the earliest adopters of that. And um, I used to have a fractal audio rig that mixed real amps and uh, my guitar tech, God bless him, you know, really helped me keep that together over the years, but it sort of became like a nightmare. I had this monster refrigerator rack full of amps and, and, uh, and I, so I just switched the fractal Axe FX3 and I've been touring like that. I toured with just the Axe FX. I had to use the Axe FX AX8. Do you know that product? Are you familiar with that product? I've seen it before, yeah, yeah. Uh, we were doing a lot of fly dates to um, Asia. And so I, I, I needed the tiny rig, you know, I, I needed something small. So 
that's I, I just got used to it and I was like oh I can make this thing sound good and the sound guys were happy and the techs were happy because all they had to do was like open a case and plug in a guitar and it was done so and in the studio uh depending on the situation I, I love to use vintage amps but most of the time I use a lot of the universal audio plugins and the, the slate plugins and they sound great it's it's a lot different than it was when that technology first came out where it was like really lacking and it was like you know, you'd switch to something and be like, this is a twin and sound nothing like a twin. You're like, okay. <laughs> but now, you know, it's stuff sounds pretty good. And honestly, I don't have like a, a, a nostalgia for sounds. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if the part is good, you know, the stuff sounds good. If the song is good, it sounds good. Like some of those early Bob Marley records, they were all recorded with like 57s, you know, like, but the songs are so great and the playing is so great that you're like, this record sounds great. You know, but so it's more about the vibe and the part than than the gear, I think. For sure. I, I, I guess like uh, it's so easy in this days where we have so many options to get bogged down in all that type of thing. Right. But like you said, the the playing and the part makes makes a world of difference. So in terms of like your, your pedal board setup, like Ernie Ball have just released a new pedal board power supply that you are using. Right. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, you know, um, I I love this thing. My friend, uh, my friend, my guy out here at Ernie Ball was like, "Do you want to check this out?" And um, he was like, "It's really small. It is tiny, right?" <laughs> and um, I was like, "Yeah, okay." You know, and um, I actually love this thing. Um, it's these are the things I like about it. Like you could totally put this thing on a board, right? And 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 kind of when, when I was a kid, I used to love to build boards, but in the studio, a lot of times you don't want um, your signal going through all these pedals that you're not using. So this is like perfect for me to like kind of have on the floor and quickly switch things in and out and power. Like for instance, um, a secret weapon of mine is this uh, little boss pedal. And I use it on everything, right? But it's it's not on any of my boards. And when I use it, I don't want it going through other stuff. So this is perfect for it. And this thing is pretty cool. I, I called up um, some of the tech people to ask questions about it. This has um, five isolated outputs and it's super quiet. And that's really important in the studio. A lot of the, um, a, a lot of the, the power supplies in this price range can be noisy especially the wall wart ones that have adapters coming out and you kind of have to like tape off the adapters just in case they touch metal, they make a lot of noise. And this is super quiet, they're all isolated. The other cool thing about it is, is that sometimes when you're in the studio and you're just being creative, you either you or you're having somebody um, put power supplies and pedals, this thing you can't kind of mess up, it will shut down if you do it wrong. So I can't tell you how many times I've been around people plugging in things wrong and frying them. Uh, and this thing, um, I've been told, I, I didn't actually try to mess it up, but it, it, will, um, it will turn itself off, you know, and make you restart. It's also super like you can step on it. And um, the other cool thing is, is that they have these little I don't know if you can see it, but it has these lights when it lights up and it will, the lights will dim if you're taking too much power off of it. And you can kind of stack these if you were crazy and, and you know, you can kind of stack these and, and, and join them together with this through right here. So you can power like a bunch of pedals on it. And the, so the things that I like about it is it's small, it's quiet, it's, it's basically indestructible which in my world is really good. And also I'm like, I'm like big and clunky and this is actually a small space. So I step on plastic power supplies all the time and crack them. And it's just like the worst feeling. Do you ever step on something in your studio and like hear it crunch? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm in a small space too. <laughs> I so, um, and I've been told, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this, but I'll say it and you can edit it out. Like I told that they, like they tested this in a crock pot. Like this thing is like super indestructible. So I love indestructible, like, you know, idiot proof things, especially when your mind is elsewhere. And um, it's just really cool and it's tiny. And um, yeah, I've been digging it. I've been using it. I've been using it. I have all these pedals like on, on the side here 
that I use all the time. And I just like, oh, I use that one, I use that one. I do have boards for like, um, that I've wired together for, um, for tours, you know, that have been sitting the same way for like 20 years, but I tend not to use those. Mm. It's so weird to me when people wire together pedal boards because I'm like, aren't you gonna change your mind? <laughs> you know, like pedals are like a staycation for guitar players, you know, you're always like, I have this one friend who's like always buying new pedals and I was like, oh, that sounds cool. I'll buy it off you next week when you're tired of it. You know, like it's just like, so this thing is like works for me in that regard because it's just like I'm powering up the new things that I have and that I'm using and it's easy to kind of switch it and it's quality, you know? So it'd be one thing if it was like small and easy to use and indestructible, but it was noisy, that would be a drag and I wouldn't be here talking about it with you. <laughs> but um I think it's really, I think it's really great, really great product. And it actually has made me go like, oh, maybe I should start building some boards. It'd be easy with this thing. That's cool. Right on. So do you know, it, it looks like it, that can supply like 300 milliamps. So I, I'm assuming it can power digital pedals as well as, you know, analog stuff too. I think it can, um, I think it can power, um, anything individually up to 300 milliamps and i suspect although they didn't put it in the manual can i say something that i suspect is this like an open interview i suspect that you can jump them because of the kind of nature of it that you can kind of put two together into one but it's basically made for the um geared towards the bulk of pedals that are out there which are like nine nine volt you know right. less than 300 milliamp kind of pedals so, but I think that you could, they're isolated, but I would imagine that you could combine them. Now I'm like out, out there, like I'm, I'm saying stuff that Ernie Ball didn't, didn't, didn't say I could say. <laughs> well, but, it's, uh, it's got that safety feature. So maybe it'd just shut down if it didn't work, you know? Yeah. Let's we're, we're covered now. <laughs> yeah, we're covered. It's the safety. Chris Trainer said, yeah, I can't destroy this. And there's going to be all these videos of people trying to destroy them. Like when they throw their iPhones out the window and stuff. No, but for uh, the other things that are in this price point that, that I won't mention that I've used, this is far better. You know, it's, it's quieter and, and I've talked to the people that worked on it and I don't know them, I'm not friends with them, but they're like really passionate about this thing. Passionate about a power supply, which we, we're, we can laugh at, but also we get, you know, cause you don't want to get this thing and have your favorite pedal not sound good. And I definitely don't want to like plug in a pedal when I'm in a studio or have somebody plug something in and have the power be um, ratty. So I've been using this all week since I got it and it's great, it's been great for me. Right on, yeah, it's uh, it's like power supplies and cables are like the things that, that we all overlook, right? We take them for granted, but it's like they can have such an impact on your sound and on, on your You know rate. what they sent me too? Um, which I think are so cool is these, these uh, Ernie Ball, these flexible cables. Have you seen these? I, those are cool. They're really cool. I was explaining to my girlfriend why they were cool and she zoned me out. <laughs> so like, I was like, they're so cool because look at my pedals now. Like I can put these two together like this and she wasn't interested in it, but like, I think they're very cool. Right on. Well, maybe that's how you know it's good. Like when when it's like the, you get the glazed over look, you know. <laughs> totally. <laughs> awesome. Well, what what have you got uh, on the horizon for? I mean, I guess there's still like a big unknown with 2021 with the situation that we're that we're in. But, uh, you know, prayerfully or you know, hopefully as things go go well. Like, what what do you have on the horizon for uh, for for Chris Trainer? What's next? I am allegedly going to Australia with Bush and Stone Temple Pilots and Cheap Trick to go on tour in right April on. and May. So fingers crossed that that happens. And uh, I'm just going to keep writing music, you know, writing music, play, playing music and, uh, and trying out new, new power supplies. Actually, I don't have to try any more new power supplies. I got one. <laughs> You're gonna, you can get more of the same one and try them out. Totally. Next time you see me, it's just going to be like stacks of these behind me. <laughs> <laughs> well, right on. Well, thanks. Thanks so much for, uh, you know, joining me today, Chris, and, and, and telling us a little bit about yourself and then also about the, uh, the new vault from Ernie, Ernie Bull. 
Um, and uh, we'll definitely be on the lookout for, you know, for uh, this this tour and for more um, you know, more projects coming up from your studio as well. So uh, thanks again. And uh, yeah, hope you have, hope you have a great rest of the day. You too, man. It was great to laugh with you, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. And if you if you guys out there are interested in finding out any more about uh, you know the Ernie Ball Vault or any Universal Audio or Slate products, you can head on over to AmericanMusical.com. Thanks so much for watching.